Dude, we, I was walking in the middle of the mountains in Italy, and <laughs> I walked by this guy. He's like, Muay Thai, because I was wearing a diamond Muay Thai shirt. Uh-huh. Then he looked at me again. He's like, are you the Muay Thai guy? I'm like, are you <laughs> oh my God. kidding me? Like, Welcome, guys. Welcome back to Muay Thai Guys podcast, episode number 106. We're back at it after a month of a lot of travel, a lot of events happening, my recent glory fight, Muay Thai Guys wedding. Now we have Mrs. Liz Fagan. Uh, that used to be Liz Gashler. That was Liz Gashler Yoga. And now it is Mrs. Fagan. So it's a lot of exciting things, a lot of travel, a lot of events that have popped up, um, a lot of really amazing things, a lot of not so, so great things. And uh, that, yeah, now we're back at it again. I'm back in Thailand. I'm in Chiang Mai. Sean's temporarily in New York City or well, upstate New York, and then he's making his way back to Thailand very soon. So how is everything? How is all the travel? Uh, everything's great, man. I mean, it was a little unexpected to come back to New York, but we've been making the most out of it and seeing family and friends and getting some of the adult things, I guess you could say, done and taken care of before we head back to Thailand. So uh yeah, like we were saying before we uh, started recording the podcast, I, we actually ran out of passport pages, so we had to renew our passport and get new visas and stuff. Terrible and problem to have. I know, I know. Life is hard, man. Life is hard, but uh, it was it, it was a blessing in disguise because now we're we're able to come home, see my uh, newborn uh, niece, hang out with the family a little bit. We're selling our house, so we have to pack all that shit away. So. It all works out. I mean, I do miss training. I do miss the Thailand weather. But uh, are your ribs back in order? You ready for the next fight? I I fucking hope so, man. Because I remember uh, th- they were feeling good during the the retreat that I hosted. But then I was doing a drill with someone where we were catching kicks and just like a little catch, like hurt a little bit. And so I don't know. Like I feel like it's better. But it's one of those things where, like, you don't know until you get hit there again. But either way, I'll get back into training. I'm, I'm getting back into the flow of, like, working out and training right now. But uh, back in Thailand, as you know, it's much more conducive to uh, the, the Muay Thai training. While here in New York, I'm doing a lot better work here because uh, I have my office, as you can see. And I'm able to just, like, close the door, smoke a joint, and yeah. put in the work. And then I'm good to go. Whereas in Thailand, it's the opposite. I'm much more training focus where work is kind of like a, a side thing so it's all good though and i know you're in thailand you're in Chiang Mai. you got a good setup it looks like your internet is like very nice man we haven't had like any issues yet knock on wood this but uh the best that has been i know uh, since being in thailand and recording the podcast so it is definitely a plus i did get uh the fastest connection for my phone i'm actually hot spotting off of it i don't trust the wi-fi here and uh, Mia is actually going to be coming soon and she's going to be working online. So they have an option of getting 300 megabytes a second through a SIM card, um, oh. though it costs uh, 1500 baht a month. But it, it might be worth it for that type of speed. Um, I was in the mall and the lady's like, well, you can get four megabytes, six megabyte, and then one second. And she came out with like some paper that i feel like they don't normally show people because i was trying to buy a modem from them but they it's only a year you have to do a year at least so i couldn't do that and she came out with this paper and it had like this special page and it said 300 megabytes a second i was like all right well so that might be an option but just kind of how you talked about you being back home in new york it's really conducive to work than you being back in Thailand, especially on the island. Definitely a, a lot more conducive to training and being focused on that and just exploring the beauty and travel of things. The good and the bad, that is the topic of the podcast today. I think you can take that away from anywhere you are in Thailand. I still get the question. Uh, I just got the message today and another one like three, four days ago, people seeing that I'm here in Chiang Mai asking, you know, where should I train in Thailand? Where should I be in Thailand? And uh, yeah, there's pros and cons to every single region. And is the reason why, this is how I like to explain it. I love Chiang Mai for its uh, ability to do work uh, for, for the professional space, meaning uh, the training here is good, yes, 
but uh, it's, it's I'm definitely here because of uh, the ability of me to work, to be in a uh, condo. There's a lot of condos and apartments where the whole wall will be glass, right? So right here, like I can look out my balcony right now and the whole wall is glass. I have a balcony overviewing the mountains. So Chiang Mai is a unique, unique city. Unlike Bangkok, that's surrounded by gray walls. Yeah, there are a lot of buildings here, but uh, it's surrounded by mountains. So it has a different, like more serene feel to it. A lot more intellectual people because there's a lot of universities here and the westerners that are here since there's no beach so you know you can say it's a con oh there's no beach and things like that but it's also a pro because now it's like the tours that are here they're more long-term stays they're more respectful to the culture uh things are a lot cheaper here you know it's like 30 bottom meal versus 50 60 120 in phuket and you know it, that that's what you get with it is like when you're in Phuket, yeah, you get the beaches, you get you know better internet service, and you can get to the mall like you know within minutes or seconds, and you can talk English to anyone. But then the cons are you're paying for that. You know, it's a lot more extra money. Everything comes at a premium. You don't really experience the culture as much either. And uh, and then the islands, you know, they're kind of in the middle. That's that's why I kind of like Bangan because that's a it's a more like jungly, chill island where you get a bit of the Thai feel. But then you you know if you need to get things, you can still do that. Just twenty minute ride to the main island, Samui. So there's definitely uh, a lot of good and and bad in being wherever you are. So I'm trying to figure out the balance between like coming here to work and then being more down south with with the westerners to train yeah it's a we need to write a like in-depth breakdown of the regions and gyms and all the shit revolving around thailand so this way we could just send people to that page because it can be overwhelming to figure out like yo where should i go and without knowing any kind of background or having any perspective on what that person is trying to accomplish or trying to do or the lifestyle they want to live. It's, it's hard to really give them the right type of advice. But like you said, I mean, each region has its own pros and cons and it's just going to depend on the person and the individual. I've fallen in love with Copenhagen. Uh, it has the balance between the, the work space, but, and, uh, the good training and the Island feel, man, it's just my style. Whereas Chiang Mai, I love Chiang Mai too. I never trained up in Chiang Mai though. And that was more of a, a work kind of vacation, I guess you can call. And that was a beautiful, like that city isn't an overwhelming city like Bangkok is. And so I can appreciate that a lot more and not feel as just yeah. crazy going to Chiang Mai. And then there, there's places like in between like a Hua Hin and a, like Which a Pai. <laughs> yeah. And like there, there's other things other smaller uh, areas outside the main ones like Chiang Mai, Pattaya, Phuket, uh, Samui, Penang, that kind of shit. But yeah, it's just, it's exciting because people get to explore and experience different parts of Thailand. And I think, I mean, like you, like myself, like anybody who goes to Thailand, once you go once, you figure out a way how to go a second time and a third time and a fourth time. It's like that first step of just actually getting there the first time opens up the opportunity for multiple trips. And then you're like, okay, where can I go next? And exploring and checking out all the areas on your own terms so you can get like the real first person perspective, I think is the best way to go, obviously. But if you don't have that type of time or money where you don't, you're not able to go and check it out for yourself, then doing your research online, asking us and just checking out as much as you can through uh, the gym's Facebooks and social media is a uh, super key. But uh, you froze up a little bit. I hope you're there, bro. Oh, I don't understand. And we just like put in the graces in your new internet service. And now they were just like, nah, fuck that. You can't try that. <laughs> but uh, let's, uh, let's catch up, man. Like, like we said, when we first started, there was a, this past month has been, full of events and happenings good and bad um break down a little bit of what's been going on with you man so we left off on my way to chicago we had the glory uh 58 happening in chicago it was a big event with simon marcus and Pereira fighting in the main event and um 
I was I was right there right before the super fight series and you know it, it, it's it's weird how you can hear something right before a fight and something as little as just where your mind goes can kind of change the entire trajectory everything you've been doing for like however many months um i think a big part of it is just this past year of um injuries and everything that's been happening i thought about it in the past two years that i've been pro i think i've only been healthy fighting for half of that like for one year of that because i had the I had the MCL tear that it kind of took four months out of me. Then I had uh, the no surgery, which took like four months out of me. And then I had um, I had the initial nose break, which was three and a half months. So that right there, you know, 11 and a half months gone <laughs> out of my first two years as a professional. Um, you know, and I love keeping momentum going. I feel like my whole life kind of lives on momentum. So um yeah we went into the fight i felt amazing i felt like i had one of the best camps ever felt super strong uh, i had a notice you know to make 170 uh this is my first time with glory where you know they gave me more than like two weeks to make the weight and everything so it felt good doing that i felt bigger than ever at 170 like when i weighed in you can tell like i, I look really strong um and then it was one of those things like you're in the back and everything feels heavy um but regardless i just was like man i just put too much work into this just let me go out there and put put it all out on the line and my coach said you know there's just no way you should lose this fight there's no reason to the kind of competition you're going against the only way you lose is if if you beat yourself inside your head and i did my best not to and uh i went in uh, I dropped him in the first round and snapped my hand. So I, I felt it the second I landed the punch. Um, I was counter striking him with the left hand over and over again. And he liked to really switch stances and kick to the outside. So he did that and I timed it, landed the big left hand. Uh, maybe there was like 20, 15 seconds left in the round. So then I landed another left hand. We ended up in the clinch and then the round ended. Then uh, in the second round, I again I was just trying to time but I felt like the only open thing was the left hand and my left hand was broken and I told my coach that my left hand is broken in the corner so we were trying to find a way around it but I just kept fucking throwing it I, I was trying to count how many times I did it but I think I smashed the broken hand like another 15 at least 15 times and every time I popped I was like stop doing that you're like making it way worse and and i, and I can't punch and, and i can't punch fully with it like uh yeah i'll ask you right after this how, how you dealt with it because you broke your arm in the fight so it's you know i was throwing it knowing it's broken so it's hitting with like a third of the power but it's the most open attack and glory has re like really made me think about my style because i need to I feel like against these really aggressive guys, if I'm extremely aggressive too, then we just fall into each other. And I noticed that throughout the whole night is like a lot of shit show fights because both guys are trying to have that like aggressive style and they're just running in into each other, getting in the clinch. And the referees are extremely aggressive about wanting to take points away and yelling at you for clinching. So the whole night you just see guys running into each other and the ref yelling at them for clinching. So if you guys want a reference to this, just get on YouTube. Look at the Simon Marcus Pereira fight, their second fight. Like the entire fight, the referee's in their face and it's the same exact referee that refereed my fight. Um, so when my coach said that, is like, is like if you keep backing up and counter-striking him, they're like, no one's appreciating what you're doing. I landed like, I don't know, five knees to the face. There's a picture of me landing a knee to the man's throat. Uh, he was a super tough fighter, uh, you know, going through a knockdown, getting hit with the knees to the face and everything. But like the commentators aren't saying anything about it. The crowd is not reacting to the counter strikes, but you know, if he runs forward, throwing a lot of punches at my gloves, everyone's kind of going crazy. And um, you know, the, from that range, I have no elbows the the clinches kind of look frowned upon so uh definitely my next fight i'm looking forward to uh i really want to fight muay thai again i mean it, it's i i haven't fought since that world title fight against chip 
that was my last in Muay Thai. It would be good to get my swagger back. In the third round, um, I got hit on the neck as I slipped on a kick at the same time. It was like, I, if you play a back slow motion or freeze frame it, you see that it's like, you guys can see on video, um, uh, the wrist, like here, this part, like hitting the back of my neck and pushing at the same time that it hits. And I'm on one leg, so I slip back. But you see me, as I'm getting like pushed, I'm like, yo, I'm not. I didn't get hit <laughs> looking at the ref and even in the replay as they pan the camera, like you see me like talking and moving my head, talking to the ref <laughs> and, and then I pop up instantly and he starts counting me. And so it is what it is, man. Like, um, I made the post after I just said, you know, the man overcame, uh, adversity, you know, he beat him, you know, he beat himself on mine and I lost to myself you know, in my own mind, I should have adjusted. I mean, looking back, we talk about this 2020 always, like I should have switched stances, hit my right hand. Like I could have had whatever I wanted that was open when it came to punches, but I just kept throwing my fucking broken left hand and uh, it split the bone in the hand. So it's going to be at least two months before it heals. I bet on myself to win the fight, meaning I spent, this is this third time every time i do this i lose a fight <laughs> when, when i just kind of like have a six day notice and i don't put a lot of money into it then i end up winning or it's a really good fight and um you know i did this when i fought where i just put all my eggs in one basket kind of do i did the same thing here i invested all the money that i had into the training camps um you know like all my time meaning i'm not working i'm just training focusing on one thing and uh yeah now now glory is following the same thing as ufc it's have the pay so you know you get whatever you make double if you win you make half if you lose and uh yeah we didn't get that half so um this is the good that i'm seeing and the bad is that i've always kind of had a a little bit of leeway meaning if if I fuck up, if I run out of, if I don't get paid, if this happens or that happens, I always had money in my savings to kind of save me, you know? And now I don't. So I really have no other choice but to make it work. And I got flown back out to the Thailand without any means of being able to come back or having enough to come back. So I have to make it work. So now, that's what I've been doing is I'm in the gym, just focusing on my athletic development. Um, you know, our mutual friend, Lawrence Kenshin, he watched back all my fights. Uh, he's obviously great at, uh, looking at patterns and just seeing what develops and what doesn't and, you know, uh, people's attributes. And it's like, man, out of everyone you fought, it's like, I feel like there's maybe one person that matches your skills and perhaps exceeds them. You know, like I would say Troy, Troy may be a more skilled fighter than me out of the, you know, nine professional fights I've had. But besides that, I feel like I'm the more skilled fighter. And though I am, I'm not winning some of these fights when I should be. And it's honestly just because guys are, you know, more, especially like I felt it in the, in the Chip Moraza fight is that like I saw the counters, I saw the mistakes and I tried to take advantage, but it was just always too not fast, like a split second too late is always a split, like faster, boom, 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 you know? So just working on my athletic development now as I work online and work on a number of uh, hopefully what you guys find exciting projects. So, taking a step back and just uh going over everything that you've been going through and just reassessing reality i mean obviously you've had a bad string of fights a bad string of injuries and you're running out of money but at the yeah. same time you're you're able to kind of use that as like death ground which uh sun tzu from uh the war uh, the art of war talks about like when an army is backed up against like uh, something they can't retreat from, like whether it's like a mountain or a river, 
when they have to stand their ground and fight, their morale and their ability to fight like multiplies by ten to twenty times uh, if they were able to have that that escape plan. And it's the same thing with uh, the the Spanish explorer uh, Cortez when he w- was trying to uh, go to Mexico to overtake that, and he just sunk all of his boats and was like, "Yo, we're here." Like we're outnumbered, we're outmanned, but we got to make this work, and they and they fucking did. And so I feel like you're kind of at that stage right now, where like your back's up against the wall, and you just have to fight your way out of it. How do you feel about that? And do you feel like there is some benefit to it? Do you feel scared about the uncertainty of the future? Like wh- where's your mind at in the whole grand scheme of things? I I would connect it a lot to what I was just watching. Um, there's a new show that I would actually highly recommend for everyone to go and check out. It's on Netflix. You know, for the actor Frank Grillo. It's called Fightland, I believe. So it's it, it's called Fightland with Frank Grillo. If you search him, you'll you'll find it. And the first episode is uh, unboxing. The second episode is actually him in Thailand. So he travels those the martial arts in the countries where they originated from and talks to the people and in mexico when they talk about boxing i mean honestly it just made me it gave me a sense of pride to what i'm doing because you you see the example of all these kids and what it can do for them and especially to have someone that is a role model uh, like they had caesar chavez on the show and it showed him with the kids and and a number of other famous trainers and the, how much pride they took in their and what they did with boxing, how these kids, you know, they were drug addicts. A lot of them were alcoholics. Some of them were gang, uh, gang members, gang bangers and how boxing just completely turned their life around. You know, they're like, you know, people see this as sadistic. They see as mayhem, they see it as violence, but, all we see is these kids hugging after and, and what is their other choice? You know, like for me, my other choice may not be, um, you know, be gang banging or anything like that, because although I, I didn't grow up with much, um, at least I didn't grow up uh, with a family that kind of pushed me away and let me roam the streets and things like that. Like I, I still have a good mother and and I'm lucky to have that. But to me, uh, taking the other road, like anything else that I would do other than this, it would feel like the equivalent of that. Like now having felt it, now having felt how good it feels to do something special for you to, for people to remember you as someone that did something different rather than, you know, just doing like falling into trouble or going into a job to, do something that a hundred thousand millions of people have ever done to me it's almost the same thing now so yeah it's how you explained it um kind of backed up against the wall i don't really feel anything about it besides like you know what do i have control of you know just going forward because i got no room behind me (laughs) So there, there, there's nowhere else to go backwards, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm here in Chiang Mai. This is honestly like the cheapest option is to live here, eat Thai food for a dollar a meal, to live in an apartment. Once Mia gets here, we're gonna be splitting it. It's gonna cost us about a hundred dollars each, and to make it work. And she's not in any better of a position. Um, uh, she sold her car. So now, you know, she was sleeping on couches with friends uh, until she gets here to Thailand. Still, you know, behind on some money and things like that. But she's getting certified as a teacher and working um, online, doing like data analysis for a mother's company and things like that. So uh, making things really work. And once she gets here, like we're going to try to rise above all this together. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean... What, what, what you've you said this to me in Greece is like you know it's just it's part of the story. Yeah, man. I think uh, I mean you highlighted in the the podcast description uh, dream chasing and I th- dream chasing. I didn't say that right. And uh, 
I think one thing to really highlight in that is the fact that there's going to be a lot of resistance, a lot of challenges and obstacles that you don't see fucking coming. And even if you do see it coming, it's still like a smack in the face and you realize like, oh shit, this isn't going to be as easy as I thought. And like, it's one thing, excuse me, as a fighter, I mean, because obviously uh, fighting itself is a, a very challenging sport and activity. And so you're, you're kind of expecting losses, injuries, and that kind of stuff. But like when you're trying to also make a living doing it and affect people in a positive way, but while keeping some type of income where you could live off of and live the type of free lifestyle that you want, it's a... Uh, not easy, man. Entrepreneurship and becoming a professional fighter, they, they take uh, a lot of creative energy, a lot of mental energy, and doing both at the same time is not easy. And just pursuing your dreams in any form, whether it's uh, outside of the realm of combat sports and it's more in the realm of opening up your own business or if it's becoming a professional athlete in some other area, like it, it all has this this aura to it where like it, when you make it it's amazing and you're, you're but the thing is you're constantly making it but then you're constantly not making it and then like you're you keep going on these ups and downs and it's really important not to be too high and not to be too low and that whole stoic philosophy of just being like realistic well not realistic i hate that word because being realistic is bullshit but being like practical like all right this is what's happened how am I going to be better from it? How am I going to change things? How am I going to uh, have uh, impact on the things that I can actually control? Because there's no sense of worrying about the things you can't control because yeah. they're out of your control. So why build up anxiety and depression from that? Just focus on the things you can't control and be grateful for the things that you do have in your life. And then things don't seem as bad, especially when you when you put it in perspective of like what other people could be going back to, I mean, if you think of like your worst possible outcome from this, it's not as bad as it could be in regards to like, you you won't be homeless. You won't be dead. You won't be like incapacitated. You'll probably have to move back home and, and start from scratch in a sense. But like, even that, is like a privilege in a way because you you have the shelter and the family and that kind of stuff. And I think that goes for majority of the people who are listening to this podcast, majority of people in first world countries. And so when you keep things in perspective like that, it makes you realize that like your, your problems, although they seem like very daunting and challenging at the moment and you could be afraid of failing or afraid of succeeding in some cases uh it's important to know that like it's really not that bad in the grand scheme of things but at the same time you have to have this sense of urgency of like it is that bad though and i don't want to go back to it and so it's like this weird balance where you have to like have this dual perspective of like knowing that things could be a lot fucking worse but also knowing that you're capable of so much more and you don't want to take any more steps back. It's hard, man. Like this life of dream chasing is not easy, but it's like you said, it's the story. It's the way you're able to inspire other people. And it's the the overcoming obstacles is what everything is all about. Like if you're not doing that in your life, if you're just being comfortable and we, we were talking about this before the podcast too, of like how in five years, like we, we're completely different people and we've learned so much. And we, five years ago, we thought we knew everything, you know, and now we're like, oh, we didn't know shit. It's kind of like that when you're growing and evolving and challenging yourself, you notice big changes in your personality and your perspectives. But when you're comfortable and you're doing the same thing day in, day out, the same job, the same routine, the same lifestyle, you don't notice that shift, that that paradigm shift in your mind where you're thinking about things differently or th- even that physical difference in your body uh, with your athletic development because it's so easy to just get caught into the, the mundane routine of what society has planned for you. But when yeah. you're outside of that, you're just, you're on your own. And so you, you're forced to change. You're forced to evolve. Otherwise, you're going to go back to the the mundane way that society wants you to live. 
Well, it's a reality when when you get smacked in the face when apparently you're doing all the r- right things. You know, you're putting in the the six hours of training every single day. There's nothing more you, that you can fucking do that you're asked of by the trainer, and then still somebody is beating you to the punch. So obviously, some something's got to change. And there's no better realization than when somebody hits you in the face. Um, I'm at the point where like. What, what you talked about, like, oh, you know, the worst thing, you're not going to be homeless. You can always go back home, things like that. It's like, but I'm almost willing to risk the fact that I might be homeless in, in a different sense. Like, I'll be sleeping at my friend's house here or whatever, because, you know, there are always people willing to help even when you are homeless. Like I said, like my girlfriend, she doesn't come from from a poor family or anything like that, but like she's had to sleep in her car before she's had to sleep on the couch and things like that. So, um, you know, like maybe as a sense of pride, but for me as a sense of pride, like I, I would kind of rather even be homeless and make all that happen. Like I was in a place and I feel like this, this was the time that my parents and my mother kind of let it, let it happen. And they understood is, they were, when they said like, what if we tell you, you have no place to stay? And like, what if you run out of your money and everything like that? I'm like, then that's what happens. And I where whatever place I'm in, whether, you know, I don't have a place to stay and I have to figure that out, whatever it may be, then, then that's what I'll do. If you don't want to give me a place to stay, that's fine. I'll have to figure it out myself. And that's where <laughs> my parents kind of like realize like, Oh, like he has a lot of money and as a kid, this is, you know, let's say a couple of years ago now, two years, I had, you know, 20, 30 grand in my account, no problem for anything to go wrong. Um, and they're like, you know, he's in a good, healthy spot and he still wants to do this thing, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, that's, yeah. Since then, it's kind of sad to think about how, how it hasn't gone up. I, I mean, I wish that, that that number has gone up, but... Um, well, a lot of it is actually to, invested in a way. That's though, what I was you about know? to say. Like, it's an investment in your your personal growth and your athletic development. So it, although it might not have paid off immediately, it's a long-term thing. It's like putting money in stocks and shit. Like, you're not going to get immediate return on it sometimes, but it's a long-term investment that you're looking at. Yeah. And I think uh, one thing I wanted to ask you too is like you you are like the hardest worker I know in regards to training. and I, I can imagine how frustrating it must feel to put in all this work and go above and beyond with the amount you're doing, with the running, with the training, with everything, and then still come up short. Can you talk a little bit about like how how you deal with that and how other fighters, especially upcoming amateurs who who feel like they're putting in all the work and all the time and effort, but still come up short. How, how are you able to cope with that and still move forward knowing that there's still room for growth and to better yourself? So three out of my last fight, four have been split decisions. And although in the gym, I feel like I've done everything that I can do and there's no stone left unturned, which usually is supposed to make you feel comfortable, but obviously something is wrong if you're, four fights in a row you haven't won i don't know how to make you feel better about it right like for me like what you said is like i made a long-term investment until it happens so that's that's how i see it but what i feel like putting in the work in this camp specifically the past four months how much i work out and money i put into it then is that it made me tense meaning I put in so much work that I weighed so much of it on my performance, meaning like I better fucking perform well and I better wow everyone and I better make this exciting. Like I, I literally said to my people, like, it's not even about winning, losing, like, unless I go out there and I have a highlight reel and a spectacular performance where I just shine, like I failed. And I had that same type of pressure on myself going out there. I don't think anyone else put that same type of pressure on me, but I did. And you go out there and a lot of people have even said to me, like, you don't have the same look in your eyes. You don't have the same like strut, you know, like I'm, I'm not walking the same to the ring. I'm not as confident. And, and this, this has to do with two things is me putting the pressure on myself. So I'm a lot more tense and two 
is the fact that I listen to people for a little bit too much um, with the whole stay humble, be humble thing. And, and I mean, you hear a lot about it right now. Like, oh my God, Khabib jumped over a fence. Like, you know what I mean? Like two wrongs don't make a right just because Connor was talking shit. Like you're no better man now, et cetera. Like, you know, at the end of the day, both of these men came from fucking nothing. I don't think half the people can even imagine what it's like to go through that type of life and that type of lifestyle and to come out on top because that's like a one in a million and in a, in, in fraction that again, right? Uh, that type of person doesn't come around very often. There's a reason why they're up there. For... <clears throat> So for you to have an opinion on what they're doing is is, is just it, it's tough to listen to and and I and I did listen to it so that's that's kind of my fault like like I wanted to st say things or to have fun with certain things but I'm like you know what just you you've been in this game for a long time try to set a good example try to be more uh, you know just stoic about everything and you know, just go out there and do your job. Let your performance, how they say it, let your performance do the thing. But man, like every fight you see me in, the confidence that I, that I shine, there's there's a completely different of the fights where, where I come with that confidence. Uh, it happened when I fought Brett. You know, it happened like even during a loss, like uh, when I fought Ivan Galaz, right? Like he had all those fights and whatever. And I just kind of took it as like a fuck you kind of deal, you know? And I just, I had an insane amount of confidence probably even like too much because i just wanted to finish the fight but uh it kept me loose it kept me really loose and and seeing things and i'm having fun with it versus uh these last two fights that i've had i've been very serious um really really serious like I, i'm going there i'm like oh i better do this 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 and putting a lot of pressure and uh definitely a serious? lot more tense too yeah serious? just putting like too much pressure yeah like do you do you feel like i mean because because pressure is important because in in one aspect it helps you have that sense of urgency and put in that work so you're able to go be confident in the fight but it also can make you stiff like you said so like how do you feel like you're gonna work on balancing that in the future like moving forward like wh what are you going to change moving forward do you think to just be me in the sense that like if i'm feeling this about a certain person say it out loud or at least let it let it be in my head versus kind of catching myself like there would be times where like you know because justin's a he was a respectful guy he was a really tough guy i really had no nothing negative about him but skill wise like right now like I, I can stop right now and be like dude like don't say anything just be humble but like skill wise i'm two levels above him not just one like i'm two levels above him so that's what i should have shown in the fight to been confident like for him to miss and for me to sit there and laugh at it right be because there's times where i'm making him miss by a couple feet not just by inches i'm making him miss by a couple feet but instead i'm i'm tense after like i i slip the punch and and i'm tense trying to get back at him or trying to strike him hard right like i don't have to hit you back after every shot i can make you miss 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 have fun with it instead i always felt like oh he hit me i got to hit like almost like i'm back that first 10 fights that you have where like, oh, you make a miss and it's like, okay, I got to fucking hit him hard now. You know, like instead of just being yourself. Do you feel like that has to do a lot with the uh, kickboxing scoring that you have to retaliate and you have to be active and you can't just, just make yeah, the miss? Sure. Yeah, yes, for yeah. sure. I mean, I mean, I would have loved to break my hand and be able to elbow someone. Uh, and then on top of it, uh, you know, I was counter striking in the second round. Uh, continuing to do so. And my corner told me that he's like, he's like, no, I, I see what you're doing and landing, but I'm telling you right now, they're not going to score it for you. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's pushing for you're backing up too much for him. He's like, they, they're reacting to him coming at you. They're like, they're not reacting to your counter strikes. And, and like, I'm landing knees, like I said before, landing knees to the head, things like that. And there's like zero reaction to it. Um, 
but I wind up on a couple of shots myself and they, they like it as well. So then that kind of forces me into that, that, that kind of fight. It's hard. I was actually watching a bunch of glory fights last night. I was just in the mood to, to watch fights for whatever reason. I mean, I don't really have to have a reason, but I was just watching fights and uh, I, I chose to watch glory because I wanted to kind of understand the, the scoring and the judging a little bit more. So I watched uh, the recent uh, Peshnan, Peshnan Rung, I can't fucking mm. say his name yet, uh, yeah. versus uh, Van Roosmalen. And dude, first off, that tie is a fucking savage. Like the way he yes. beat Van Roosmalen was incredible. And like I watched uh, him fight a couple times before that. Uh, he fought Van Ostrand and, uh, and somebody else. And he, he looked good, but like against Van Roosmalen, man, he looked amazing. Anyway, yeah. uh, I watched a couple more fights uh, after that one, and I remember just trying to understand how the scoring went. And there would be some fights where the the guy who was countering and backing up was landing better, and sometimes the judges scored for them. And then there was other times where I thought the counterfighter was even better than the guy who won, but then he would lose the fight. And so it's very hard to know what – judges you have what perspective they have whether they're gonna like your boxing more than their your kicks or if you throw a spinning shit and it barely lands is that gonna win you the round you know like it, it's hard to like please the judges so do you feel like moving forward i mean moving forward you want to have a muay thai fight but hypothetically speaking if you get back into kickboxing as well do you feel like you're gonna adjust your fight style much more or or are you just going to kind of just fight your fight and and hope that the judges see the beauty in that i i have it in me to do those like pop shot combinations and uh, i've done well with them before um you know a good example was that yvonne fight i just think i need a good mix of like uh if i'm training out here to perhaps get with someone like Jason Farrow from level up because that's who I trained with before that fight um, to, to get that for maybe like two weeks before the fight, just mm -hmm. to kind of bring it together. Um, you know, like obviously the, the lifestyle, the amount of hours I put in here and everything like that is, is the best that you can have in the world. And then to be able to kind of put it together with a Western coach that's going to be in my corner and kind of reiterate for me to do those things. I think that would be the best way to do it and uh and for me to be healthy on top of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> none I of these fights none that. of these fights i've been healthy for but you know it's, it's still no excuse because honestly when i'm in the fight i don't i don't see any type of difference when i'm in them so um obviously it's more of like a, a mind thing and and just a strategy thing but uh obviously you learn a lot from these so um i, I think I'll bring together the mindset now and the physical part all together and to, uh, to, you know, bring home that win this time. So yeah, Muay Thai would be great now, uh, especially recovering from the hand, um, focusing more on, you know, kicks and clinching and everything and just doing what I love. And I've spent so many fucking years trying to understand, like, like I've educated myself in the scoring system and, and being able to fight it. And I, I feel like I've like really figured it out. And I feel like that's a huge advantage for me, especially, um, you know, because just, just think about the style. Like uh, if I come forward and we fall in the, like I can come forward more if, if we fall in the clinch and I know I can score, but if we're both coming forward, running into each other and I can't score in the clinch, then, you know, it doesn't work well against my build and style. So it's kind of uh you know, it kind of holds me back. It limits me in a way. So it'll be good to just be free again for a bit, get my mojo back and then uh, get back in there. Now for you, I feel I, I don't want to talk about myself anymore. <laughs> uh, you're in the married life now. I am. Breeze, by the way, uh, I want to thank you again, just publicly here on the podcast, uh, just having me at the wedding and picking such a serene, I mean, just unreal, breathtaking places. The first well, one of the first places uh, I've had a, a couple of moments like that in life, but maybe not quite as deep as this one, where like you just look up and you're like, "Wow!" Like I, I can't believe this is in front of me. This is real right now. Yeah, the the video you made was beautiful, man. It really uh, helped put into 
uh, visuals, like w- what the island was all about. And that was my first time to Kefalonia. We just kind of went on a whim because uh, a friend, Jerry, who, uh, yo, shout out to Jerry. He he was uh, the co-host for this uh, Greece retreat. And he uh, he has a house in Greece and he speaks the language and he hooked it the fuck up. Like he did such a good job. And uh, he came to a past Costa Rica retreat. He's like, dude, you got to do it in Greece. I was like, yeah, man, like I would. I don't know how to even start. He's like, don't worry, I'll set it up. And he did. And it was uh, the best retreat yet, man. The, the group was so uh, so tight in like such a short amount of time. And like the group dinners and everything. I mean, and like the, the venue we were at, the, the, like, like at the venue where we have the pool and stuff, you're overlooking the ocean with the sunset. It, it's just unreal. And so... Yeah, man, I'm really happy that you were able to make it. I know money was tight. You just came back from that fight and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it, it was great having you and everyone else around. To we, we wanted to do it in Greece because we we wanted our family and friends, the ones who could make it, to understand our lifestyle a little bit more. And so they all were able to kind of see how the retreat was running, how we were like uh, just getting things set up, how how we were in our in our environment as opposed to our coming back to new york and getting married there and by the way like getting married in greece was half the cost than getting married in new york so it was like a a no-brainer for that so yeah man it was a it was a great experience and like i said that retreat was by far i I don't want to say by far because a lot of the retreats were fucking awesome but like this one was different Uh, obviously because it was in greece for the first time but just the the group as a whole like everyone connected everyone got well uh, got along really well. Everyone enjoyed the training, and it was just it was it was almost completely seamless the entire way through. So we've already set up dates for June 2019, and uh, the the ladies who who you uh, who you met there, the three uh, Latina ladies from uh, Guatemala, Uruguay, and uh, I can't remember the third one, but uh, either way, they uh, they wanted me to do one in Spain. So now I'm trying to set one up in Spain for next year, I see that. and. Uh, it's just it's crazy man just the 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 way everything has kind of unfolded in front of me and like these retreats and training camps that we're doing were not ever in the plan and the fact that they are like the main thing like right the now main part of your life now man yeah it's like it, it's just bizarre and that's just going back to chasing your dreams these types of things just manifest themselves whether you're thinking about them or not as long as you're putting in the work, you're going in the right direction, you, you meet the right type of people and you have that type of effect on people. It, uh, it inspires people and it, it makes them want to be a part of your journey. And so, yeah, I'm very grateful for my life right now, man. I'm in a really good place. And, um, as much as I don't want to be in New York, I'm enjoying it. I want to be back in Thailand with my dog and training, uh, with crew bow who kicks my ass every day, you know, and, uh, here it's, uh, it's much more, I, I have to do things, uh, in regards to training on my, on my own, especially cause my buddy, Chris, my main, my main training partner, he's in Ireland right now about to fight tonight on Lion yeah, fight. Shout out to and Chris so, on Lion fight you know. and to Eddie Albasolo. They're going to put on a show on uh, Lion fight there in Ireland. I can't wait for that. But, uh, yeah, I don't have any training partners right now. So I'm just kind of banging the bag on my off time going for runs and, and whatnot. But, uh, I, I think it'll all work out because we got our, our camp coming up in February. I got, uh, the January, uh, retreats in Costa Rica. And because whoever's listening to this podcast right now, you, you get a little insight. So right now I'm running a contest for a free place at a Costa Rica retreat. That's like all inclusive, not including flight. So that's like food, accommodation, training, uh, waterfall, tour, massage, a bunch of other kind of shit. And, uh, all you gotta do is go, go to the Muay Thai retreat, uh, Facebook page to uh, find out how to enter. But we're also going to be giving away a free spot at a Thailand camp in either February or April. And that is including the flight and a couple more things. Uh, it's sponsored by Qatar Airways. So, boom. All right. So, that's going to be coming out. Qatar is yeah, next. Le- yeah, I, I rave yeah. about them all the time. It's funny that they uh, reached out to a common friend of ours. But, uh, yeah, because I f- have flown only them for the past, like, two years. 
Yeah, and they're they're great. I mean, that's the that's the main airline we usually end up flying to. So it kind of was serendipitous and how they ended up connecting with us. But uh, yeah, that we're giving away a free flight and a free two week camp at an upcoming camp in either February or April. So keep an eye out at the Thailand Training Camp Facebook page for that contest because uh, these re- these uh, camps and retreats are are filling up quicker and quicker as we do more and more, and. I have a feeling that these things are they're on the verge of exploding because people are seeing that. I mean, obviously you can travel to Thailand and, and train at any of the, the gyms and have a great time and learn a lot and experience the culture and the training atmosphere at that gym. But what makes our experiences different is the camaraderie and the team atmosphere that is really built inside uh, the training camp because everyone arrives at the same time. We have set group uh, trips, we have group dinners, and we have private training sessions too for for just our group. So it's not a part of the main training uh, during it's like the gym we hours. force the expectations because I've had this before where like I'm going somewhere in the world and I expect things, but then once you get there and you try to figure out the logistics and just the type of people that are going to be there it doesn't always pan out the same way so it's like here someone is organizing these things that you expect so they come to fruition yeah and it's been a lot of fun hosting these man because like as much as it uh, i was watching some of the testimonials that we ended up filming from the last one as much as they are motivated by us training i feel more motivated when they're training because they're they're usually for a short amount of time than us so they have a uh, a uh, uh, like a different type of energy and like, yo, I'm only here for a month. Like I'm going to get it all in. And when they're yeah. like that, training twice a day, putting in all the work, I'm like, shit, like I'm the Muay Thai guy. I better be fucking keeping up with them. Otherwise I'm a piece of shit, you know? So like, it really uh, motivates me having those types of uh, really motivated people like Leah, who was at the last camp, who was a great energy. I fucking love Leah. Yeah. Uh, she won her fight in Thailand. And uh, Hector, who trained really hard, he came up short, but he showed a lot of heart. Like everybody who uh, comes to these camps, it's just uh, it, it's the type of people I've always been wanting to hang out with and be a part of like training with, but it's not easily accessible in my quote unquote regular life back in New York or pretty much anywhere else. And so the fact that we're able to bring these types of people together for this unique training experience where it's not just like the best training and so much fun, but it's the island life, man. It's Koh Phangan. It's like you talk about beautiful scenery and beautiful places. I mean, we're right near the beach. We're right in the mountains. It's it's all around. So yeah, the the fact that we get to do this man it's uh it's always somewhat surreal and i've had time to reflect recently because i've been on my honeymoon and not working and so i've yeah. actually been able to be like holy shit like this life is fucking crazy like everything that we're doing is crazy like we're both pro fighters when we first met each other we were in diamond about like what was it four or five years ago now and like we were just both getting started on our our main parts of the journey and now again, like every time I, every time we have a little break from uh, doing these podcasts and link back up and talk with one another, it always just makes me realize like how how far we've come, where we are right now, and how like proud I am of both of us of where we are. But like how we're also just getting started. Like we're literally, I feel like I always feel like we're just on the cusp of something big. Always like every year, every so, like I'm like, yo, this was the best year ever. But like next year, bro, next year it's going to be the shit. And I feel like that every single year. And I guess that's a good thing to feel. And I think it's a, a large, yeah. large part because of just putting in the work, putting your head down and staying focused. I think uh, the consistency of taking action on a day to day basis, disciplined action towards your goals and having a clear vision of what your goals are is everything man and if you don't have that you got to do yourself a favor and figure out what the fuck you want out of this life and then you got to reverse engineer that shit and set goals and then set daily actions to achieve those goals it's it's as simple as that obviously it's simple it ain't easy though it's not fucking easy man it's what you talked about before is just 
moving forward no matter what. And, and that's the only way you're going to attract those types of people is like the only way you're going to meet these types of people is if you go, <laughs> you know, if you, if you commit yourself to going same thing for you, like for you to get to the point of being able to host these retreats and to connect and network with all these people, to be able to set up a place in Greece, to be able to set up a place in Spain. Trust me. I know it's not easy because I mean, I've, I've had the villa thing before myself. I've tried to set it up here in Chiang Mai before and a number of things. It's definitely not easy to just communicate and, and give up control to other people to set things up as well. So it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of effort. And it also takes a lot of just like going forward, 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 doing these positive things and meeting people that align with that. Like, because you can do the opposite, not do much, and then hang out with the people that don't do much. And then, and then you never discover anything new because no one is going out there and bringing back any information. It's like everyone's back in the village, chilling, hungry, you know, <laughs> not going out and exploring and finding shit to eat. So, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. It's an exciting time. Especially, I'm super happy for you again with the with the wedding. Again, I thank you for uh, having me out there. If you want to check out the video of Kefalonia, um, Liz is going to be posting it on the Muay Thai Vacations uh, page. It's on my YouTube channel. So if you go to MuayThaiAthlete.com slash YouTube, uh, you'll you'll see is this the most beautiful or the most beautiful island, whatever, in Greece. Um, you'll, you'll see the title. Um, I'm going to be putting out more travel blog content. I'm thinking of whether I'm going to do a separate website or fuse it with my YouTube channel. And um, I'm doing something exciting. Like I talked about is that now that I have time, I have one hand to work with and edit with. And I've spent the past few weeks literally just learning. Uh, I'm just watching, learning, subscribing to different um other people's patreons actually i've i've been subscribing to i've been subscribing to people's courses and just learning more about photography and videography is you know i have all this professional <laughs> equipment that i've invested an insane amount of money in and i i've been just going for broke with fighting literally and uh now that i you know i have a broken hand maybe it's just a sign seeing me to you know play with this other passion i've always had you know making skateboarding videos since i was in fourth fifth grade when i was a little kid and slinging dvds in high school making full edits uh and and you know doing it now uh i'm just learning a lot i'm sitting all day literally i'm not like if you look at my walking path during the day if i had like a fitbit tracking me you, you see me walk across the street to my little thai lady here she makes me my parka pao with my eggs. And then every, every, every two out of three days, I walk to the gym. That's or I go running there. It's about a mile away. I run to it. I don't have a motorbike. I can't go anywhere. It's just me, my Thai lady, the dude at the gym I say hi to, and my apartment. And I just sit in the apartment all day, just slinging away, editing, um, taking all my private lessons that I've been teaching and diagramming them, uh, the voice over diagram, editing them, giving you a little bit of uh, my personality as well in the beginning, doing like little logs uh, and, and breaking all these different privates into sections. So I, I work with professional boxer. I work with a kickboxer that wants to work on his boxing for kickboxing. I work with beginners, advanced fighters, professional fighters of all styles, uh, female, male. And I'm going to be able to bring you into this community and for you to be able to see all of these for a fraction of the price that it would be obviously just working with me one on one. But I'm actually going to start offering that as well uh, for people to work with me one on one online uh, where I'm able to do that and for you to have accountability yourself. So perhaps and, and this is the most common thing that I do come across is people that maybe they don't have the funds. So that's one thing is they don't have the funds for one on one training for high level training, quality of training. But then there are people that just don't have quality of training available in their area at all. So being able to learn these things, maybe they do have a gym, it's just not a very high level gym. So if you learn these things and you can take it back to your gym and apply them, I think it's the best thing that you can do. You know, like, like what we talked about, just taking things into what you have control of.
And then there's also the people that maybe they do have quality training, which I ran across uh, as a beginner, as an amateur, where, you know, working with these high level guys with big names, but they don't give you time. You know, you're in the group, the professional fighters really receive most of the attention and, uh, you know, you're kind of on the sideline, even though you're surrounded by all these beasts. So, you know, the best thing you can do is take example. So, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash limitless project. And I just added my whole heavy bag blueprint on there. Um, like my free version of it is just so everything is together for my content. And then I'm going to be uh, posting a lot of the private work that I just finished. So, um, I have like 20 plus videos coming from that. And then I'm just going to continue pumping it out every single week, every single week. So. It's just a suggested pledge, $5. And there's a bunch of different other tiers. And there's also an option to do one-on-one -on -one training with me, like personalized uh, Q&A sections, things like that. But I think this is going to be some of the highest level content I've created. I spent a lot of time diagramming it, making visuals, like logging myself within it, voicing it over. And yeah just breaking it down as closely as i can and there's some really really fun stuff that i wish i had when uh, i was an amateur or an aspiring trainer as well that's super exciting man i'm glad to hear that you've been able to to put as much time and energy into this finally because you're forced to because of the injury <laughs> and the situation yeah. and stuff and i'm excited to see what what it really entails and what it comes out with and Everybody who listens to this podcast, everyone who follows you on YouTube and Instagram and stuff, I mean, the $5, I'm sure, will go a long way, especially in, in Thailand. And so if if you like Paul's content already, I mean, I can't imagine the kind of stuff you're going to be putting out with, uh, with the Patreon stuff. So I'll be a Patreon, bro. I want to check that shit out because uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll sign up for one-on-ones too with Paul the Reaper. Who knows? Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> That's great though, man. man if, if you're on there, then it really does have to be high level, you know, like depending on the quality of the people that are in there. It's yeah. Limitless, bro. Yeah. It's fucking limitless. Yeah, setting the standard <laughs> high. Fucking A. So I mean, I guess we'll start wrapping up here. Is there anything else you want to go over before we uh say peace out? No, I just want to thank you again. Um, just again, for this whole journey, as you said, you've been reflecting on everything. So like, uh, hear you say all those words, everything that we've kind of gone through, you know, thank you for the journey and the experience. It was super exciting to see you and Liz, uh, just, you know, kind of tie the knot and, and go through that whole arrangement that, you know, you talked about the government kind of forcing you to, but it really, it was really special. You, especially the words you guys shared, um, I mean, the things that she said to you, uh, I see, you know, I see why you're in love with the woman because the things that she said were, you know, really special. Um, you know, the things that Jerry said, they were super special as well. The whole, the whole experience was really great. So, um, you know, like, again, that's like a standard set for me. Like you're talking about inspiring people. Like I not now my standard is set super high, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just wrap up for Paul while, while we're here. He was saying, make sure you check out the Patreon uh, slash Limitless Project. Uh, like I said, some of that stuff is probably going to be next level shit. I'm going to sign up for that $5 pledge because $5 for the amount that you can probably get from Paul is going to be well worth it. And then uh, for on my side, make sure you check out all the contests that I'll be running with the free trip to Thailand, the free trip to, well, not free trip, but free vacation uh in costa rica the free muay thai retreat package and yeah it's gonna be epic so check out uh, muay thai vacations.com we have a lot of awesome events coming up in january's costa rica back-to-back -back weeks with some jiu-jitsu surfing yoga all that kind of shit then uh february paul and i will be co-hosting a camp in thailand at Copenhagen at diamond muay thai again for the month and then uh, April, doing another camp in Thailand at Koh Phangan at Diamond Muay Thai. And then June, late June, June 22nd to 29th, we're doing our second Greece retreat. Uh, Going to start promoting that soon. But if you want to get in on the early bird special, make sure you reach out to me and sign up. And then we'll also be doing more camps in July and August in Thailand. And then we'll also 
uh, be scheduling a Spain retreat as well, which will be phenomenal. I have no doubt about it. So a lot of events going on, a lot of things coming up. Make sure you check out all of our shit. And uh, while I'm in New York and Paul's in Thailand, we're actually kind of settled, I guess you can say for now. We'll uh, be trying to get more podcasts out on a weekly basis like we always say we're going to do, uh, but it will be consistent for at least the next couple of weeks before I fly back to Thailand and get set back up and all that kind of shit. But uh, yeah, thanks again for everyone tuning in. Much love, much uh, yeah, uh, gratitude for everyone who's been following along this journey. And we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Peace.